originate from the Latin word tensere, which means to weave or to connect threads, twine straws, roots, and other environmental materials. It involves the thread arrangement process, the coloring process, and also the design of the motive and decorative aspects until it produces a piece of cloth that may be used as clothing or a piece of fabric. The history of textile in Malaysia sees the human creativity in manipulating natural resources around them, such as tree husks, animal skin, and fur to produce clothes or coverings. Its thread was from fibers of pineapple and the number of leaves and the roots of the jungle orchid plant. Then emerged the idea to dye the threads, the technique to tie single threads as the base of weaving, the art of decoration and the production of motifs in textile. The ancient art of weaving is inherited until today in Sabah and Sarawak. During the time of the early Malay government, better and fine cotton materials were initially brought in by the Indian and Chinese traders as part of the daily necessities. The people of the Indonesian islands and Borneo made cotton thread from their own farms. The influx of cloths from West Asia, India and China then brought a rich variety of textile among the society of the Malay Islands. The Kain Patola was brought in from the port of Gujarat and locally called Kain Chindai. While Kain Pata was called Kain Palangi. From the port of Palakat, Kain Palakat of the chess design was brought in and became popular amongst the Malay society. In the 15th century, textiles such as silk and gold and embroidered cloth from China and embroidery from India and the Middle East was the largest trade in Malacca, the famous trade port and trade exchange center. This development enriched the textile worn by the Malay society, who made the said textile a local culture. Kain Songen and brocade from India, decorated with Malay flowers, was inspired when Sultan Mahmud sent his entourage to India to order cloth with designs to suit the local Malay flavour. The entry of silken threads, velvet cloths, golden threads and golden leaves from China and India widened the local society's skill to produce woven art. Golden thread embroidery and decorative textile, such as goose and pillow The mastery of the Malay society in arranging, covering threads and weaving result in the weaving of Kain Lima, Lima Sonke and Lima Tengaru. Woman textile was further expanded with the Bugis pattern cloth, the Sankunda pattern cloth and the Moa pattern cloth which remains famous until today. The Bugis woman cloth was famous from the Malay Islands and was worn by men with Kira, Paha, Sardano and the Nyonya community in Malacca. Butter was known in the Malay Peninsula since the time of Sri Vijaya through the emergence of Batik Asas, which was the Batik Lami or Minak Lami, produced by the Thai dye technique and Chitik, which was adapted from the Bandana technique without the use of wax and utilizing Chinese silk cloth. The Java Paranakan Batik cloth from Kalangan and Lassin has been traded since the 15th century in Malacca and in the 17th century in Johor Rao. Then emerged the Kalan Batik and the Kota Batik, which was brought in from India in the early 1900s. The Kalan Batik is among the oldest Batik cloth. Flowered and banished designs are printed on white cotton cloth in primary colors such as yellow, red, green, blue, and brown. The Kotak Batik has bright colors on Chinese half tie silk cloth. The Batik industry began to be a local industry when the wax chopped Batik was introduced in Kelantan 
1921 and into Ghana in 1913. In summer, textile produced from the weaving machine or kendudo is the most produced. The Iranu and Bajan from Kolabal are famous for the Kaidasta and Kaimoga. The Iran produces Kain Siangitan, Ape, and Mandara Sipa. While the Luzon Timber produces Kain Pinidan using the Lung Banana Farmers. The Rubles from Kura produces Kain Kuda. While the Balkan Guru from Soup weaves the Yankees to be made into clothing. There are also textiles produced from the Linan Kid Weave Art. It is a kind of decorative material that joins two parts of cloth as decoration on sarongs, long scarves, blouses, and pants. This is produced by the Lotu in Tora, the Rungus in Pitas and Kula, as well as the Iran, Baja, and Dusku Tindal in Kutabal. Each contain their own unique style of design. The book produces clothes made from three husks, which are used during gatherings and at certain ceremonies. The binata in Kuda actively produces kaya pis, which normally are used as the head of decorative pieces by the rules. The Ivan ladies in Sarawak are known for their production of wakungu from cotton or silk threads, which are weaved using the ket nugo or ket sanda. It is used as a ceremonial cloth as well as to complete an outfit or as decoration. The Malay and the Lanao are well known for the beauty of the Songket Sarawak. The Songket, such as Kain Merkurus and Kain Malapa, with their full flower motifs or dramatic motifs, are synonymous with intricacy and beauty. The Sokhe is usually worn with this Alaya Karim Gum, another art of embroidery using fine gold thread by the Sarawak Malay ladies. Tree pus clothes, which were inherited from prehistorical times, remain part of the traditional textile of Sarawak. It is produced by the Lulu Babong, Iba, and Bidani, using the tree pus from the tongue and the couple of trees. The loose kabai was very prominent in the 1800s all over the Malay land. Worn by the Malays, Nunyas, and Chetis for its convenience. The era of colonialism brought forth the changes in the way of dressing when the emerging combination of East and West showed off its wearer silica in the 1900s. This new way of dressing maintained the traditional dressing aspects of the Malays, mainly matching the Songkho and the Sangri with a coat and western cut pants. Today, the Malaysian society is more at ease wearing western clothes daily as the cut and textile use is more flexible, stylish, and comfortable. However, the traditional outfits remain the choice of every race, especially during the festive seasons or official ceremonies to better portray individual identities and cultures. The Bajikuro and Bajulayu are the national outfits of the Malays. The Chinese wear the Sangfu and the Chiongsam, while the Indians wear the Sabi and the Doti. The oral musket community were clothes made from natural materials from the environment adapted to suit modern outfits. While the origins in Sama and Srawa maintain colourful traditional outfits adorned with various accessories. The technology advancement and the fashion eruption were a major influence in the textile evolution in Malaysia since the 19th century. Foreign influences as well as local innovation have fanned material usage, equipment, and textile production techniques. Today, there is a wide range of textile, though 
was made from natural fibers such as cotton, linen and silk, or man-made fibers such as rainbow, polyester, nylon, and such, which has wide choices and fulfill the needs of textile production. In Tamil, the traditional method of textile production has received a boost with the use of modern technology such as the use of machines which is today actively applied in the production of bate, soke, tukka and many others. Not only has modern technology allowed classic textiles to be produced in huge quantities at a more affordable price to meet public demand, it has also ensured that this heritage will not fade away in time to come. A few Malaysian textiles such as butter and open cloth such as soke are now industries that contribute to the country's economy and are given serious attention by the government. The soke, which once upon a time was thought of as a classic luxurious Malay textile, which was limited to the upper echelon of society, is now for everyone to enjoy and is commercial arts. The only use of one's wedding day, the reinvention of patterns and motives to newer designs, made a popular choice as comfortable daily attire. It is often seen at official functions, ceremonies, and festival occasions. It now has various uses and has been commercialized as a handicraft and as an interior decorative item that reflects the true Malaysian spirit. This development has been due to the production of Kain Soke Ella by the Malaysian Handicraft Development Body since the 1980s until the 1990s, which has made many new designs on Soke motives and patterns. But it has also been successfully adapted to the change of time and is now the commercial product of the country. But it received the news that it was made the national outfit to represent the country's identity and as the efficient uniform of the government officers and those in the private sector. It is now more warm than ever, tends to innovative development and modern technology, which stresses on the use of machines. But it designs that are innovative in contemporary fashion has gathered it an accepted audience. Modern technology has allowed butter fabric to be used in interior design products for offices and well hotels, as well as in accessories and decorative items for women for. The organization of butter competitions such as Britannia Piala Sri Endon by Yarisan Puni Kunyayam and Britannia Piala Sri Endon by the Trinidad State Government has spanned the creativity of individuals in multiplied robotic products and designs. The presence of the various modern and contemporary textiles in Malaysia have indeed enriched the textile variability and choice without sidelining the enduring rich finery and luxury of the classic textiles.
pieces have to be cut to form a flower petal mold according to required size. Then the silver will be heated so that it becomes soft and can be easily shaped. The heated silver will be drawn by a silver thickness measuring tool. After attaining the intended size, the silver will be melted to form its interesting shape and size before being run into small circles. Next, the silver wires will be put into a copper mold and the mold is pressed between the fingers slowly to the copper forms like a flower petal. The flower petals formed will be affixed one by one by placing a little silver to it and torching. After the brooch is formed beautifully, it will be dipped into sulfuric acid to make it shiny. Finally, the brooch will be scrubbed using soap to remove any dirt or grease on it. Silver is suitable to be inlaid with precious stones. Silver accessories like a precious stone ring is most suitable as a symbol of style for the men. To craft a special stone ring from silver, the ring bowl is first shaped by using the bowl of a squid. Next, molten silver will be poured into the bowl. The bowl which holds the silver will then be dipped into water before the silver is taken out of the bowl. The leftover silver not needed is set off. To get a smooth surface, the ring will be filed until it looks far and clean. The ring will be hammered using a thumb to obtain the exact shape before it is measured using a ring size measurer. Next, the base of the precious stone and its hoof will be shaped. A saw is used to design card patterns for the ring. After the process of creating the silver ring, the stone will be skillfully fixed. The ring will then be brushed to obtain the clean and shiny surface. Compared to silver rings studded with gems, silver rings from the slice rattan is more flexible. This is due to the original size of the slice rattan ring that can be altered to a larger or smaller size by using a special machine without marring the original shape or size of the ring.
The necklace which is placed in the shelter could be rubbed using sandpaper and bought gently to acquire smooth and flat surface. Later, the necklace is soaked in ash soda and sulfuric acid for 10 minutes to lose the dirt and bring out its gold color. Then the necklace 